Hello everybody, I'm Shada, Melise, Terkaraman. Today, I will talk about the quadratic assignment problem, or shortly cap, on which I will study during the semester, and a greedy approach for it. Before I begin, I would like to thank you all, for your understanding about my way of presenting, arising from my speech disorder. I guess, it won't be a long presentation. I will start by talking about computational complexity, very very briefly. Then, I will try to explain the context of the CAP, and motivation to study on it. After giving an informal and two formal definitions of the CAP, I will show you the structure of the problem instances. I will end my presentation by talking about the greedy heuristics I implemented. As we all know, in computer science, one way of classifying problems is to classify them according to their computational complexity. NP hard problems, you can see in the schema, have a high complexity. They are impossible to be solved, in an acceptable time, when the problem size increases. That's why I have searched for, an NP-hard problem, to study on. There are several studies on the CAP. I've tried to find the ones, using base version of the CAP. In total, I've chosen such two articles. One approaches the CAP through a frequent pattern based search that combines data mining and optimization, and the other approaches it through the estimation of distribution algorithms. As one of the most studied combinatorial optimization problems, the quadratic assignment problem has various applications in real life, including the planning of campus, the design of the hospital, the placement of electronic components problems, and many more. That's why it is a problem attracting the researchers to study on it. We will talk in the definition part in details that the CAP has a quadratic objective function, and it falls within the NP-hard class. Since exact algorithms are impractical for the large instances of the CAP, many heuristic methods have been proposed to provide near-optimal approximate solutions in a reasonable computation time. Moreover, several classic NP-hard problems such as the traveling salesman problem, the maximum clique problem, the bin packing problem, and the graph partitioning problem, can also be recast as a quadratic assignment problem. Now, let me define the cap in both formal and informal manner. In cap, we try to have a one-to-one -one assignment between the facilities and the locations with the minimum cost. A one-to-one -one assignment means that each facility will be assigned to exactly one location and each location has exactly one facility allocated to it. I said minimum cost so I have to provide a cost function. There is a distance between each pair of locations, and there is a weight or flow specified for each pair of facilities. The cost is calculated as the sum of the distances multiplied by the corresponding flows. In the research papers, 
the cap is formulated more or less in the same way. The formulation I will explain now is from one of the chosen articles. We have two sets. Set F contains n facilities, and set L contains n locations that can host the facilities. F sub ij represents the flow from facility i to facility j for all i and j in the set F. D sub uv represents the distance between locations u and v for all u and v in the set L. CAP involves determining assignment of n facilities to n locations with a minimal cost. Clearly, a facility location assignment can be represented by a permutation pi, such that pi of i represents the assigned location of facility i. Let the omega denote the set of all n permutations, then the NP hard cap can be formulated as the sum of the flows multiplied by the corresponding distances. Here is another similar formulation with different notations. You can examine it by pausing the video. As I said in the formulation, the permutation is very convenient to represent the solutions of CAP. Here, the permutations are nothing but a non repeating sequence of integers from 0 to n minus 1, where n is the number of facilities and locations. In the figure, you can see a sample solution with n equals to 6. The idea is that, if the number, i, is at index, u, in the permutation, then the facility i, is assigned to location u. In the sample permutation, the facility 4, is assigned to the location 0, the facility 1, is assigned to the location 1, and so on. Via this representation, the constraint of one-to-one -one assignment is automatically handled. Now let's take a look at the problem instances and datasets. There is a quadratic assignment problem library, Coplib. It contains various problem instances and optimum results for the CAP. I will be using the problem instances, uniformly symmetrically generated by Tyard. In later stages of this study, I will be comparing my results with Tyard's results obtained via a robust taboo search method in parallel computing. My Java program reads the problem instances from the text files. One of Tyard's cap instance for n equals 12 is like in the figure. The first matrix contains distances between the locations, and the second matrix contains flows between the facilities. The number at the end of the file is the known optimal value of objective function. For this instance, it is optional to include in the file. In this course, our first heuristic to implement was greedy heuristic. I tried to supplement this greedy approach explanation part with visuals. I hope they will help. First, we need to describe the components of the solution, and intuitively, a location facility pair is a good candidate as a component. For example, if there are six locations and six facilities, one greedy solution for the cap will be formed like this.
Then, the location facility pairs are ordered, according to the locations, to have a permutation of facilities. Here is the pseudocode of my greedy algorithm for the cap. If you take a look at it, you will realize the two places where the greedy heuristic is used. So, each greedy heuristic class has two methods. One, to choose first location facility pair. Other, to choose next location facility pairs. Beside these, there is a Boolean parameter, named random start. It is false by default. It means the algorithm is deterministic. If it is set as true, the algorithm turns into greedy heuristic with random start. I've implemented three different greedy heuristics. Let's go through one by one. In the closest location heuristic, facilities are selected in an ascending order, just like the indices of an array. And locations are selected, such that two successive locations have the minimum distance. In other words, the closest location to previous location is selected in each step. If random start is allowed, then a random location is assigned to the facility 0. Otherwise, the facility 0 is assigned to the location 0. In the lowest flow heuristic, this time, locations are selected in an ascending order. And facilities are selected, such that two successive facilities have the minimum flow. For the random start case, a random facility is assigned to the location 0. Otherwise, the facility 0 is assigned to the location 0 like in the first heuristic. The third heuristic is the minimum flow to maximum distance heuristic. It has a bit higher computational cost. However, slightly better solutions can be achieved. Here, we focus on the summation of all distances, associated with each location. And the summation of all flows, associated with each facility. It is better to explain on the matrices. All rows are summed up in both matrices. For example, the summation of all flows associated with the facility 0 is 295, and the summation of all distances associated with the location 0 is 130. As its name indicates, the minimum flow to maximum distance heuristic designates an unassigned facility with the lowest sum of flows to the unassigned location, with the highest sum of distances. If we go back. Here, for the random start case. Both the first facility and the first location are randomly selected. Otherwise, we start applying the minimum flow to maximum distance rule from the first pair.
Before ending my presentation, I would like to share the current output screen, for the cap instance, with the size of 12. In the beginning, problem summary is printed. Then, the solutions obtained through each heuristic with, and without random start, are listed. Random start greedy heuristics, especially the third heuristic, is able to produce better solutions, in case of minimal cost. That's all I would explain about the quadratic assignment problem, and my greedy algorithm. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you for bearing with me.